Joining us now is Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido. Mr. Guaido, thank you very much for being with us today. Mr. Guaido, when we last spoke in 2019, you had just been recognized as the interim president of Venezuela by the United States and 56 other countries. Today, you're in the United States after having been threatened by Colombia when you try to participate in a conference there. What happened? Basically, the Colombian government threatened me with deportation and surrendered me to Maduro's hands. I'm here thanks to the mission of the American government to guarantee my safety. I felt prosecuted. You said you were threatened by Colombia. What does that mean? The threat was direct to be deported to Venezuela, where evidently I left the country walking through the border because of the brutal persecution of Maduro's dictatorship. Mr. Guaido, during your time as interim president, you had oversight over CITGO and PDVSA, humanitarian assistance, and so much more. You had embassies around the world. Uh, a group called Politically Persecuted Venezuelans in Exile here in Miami say that you, quote, had an opportunity to do much and in the end did very little. How do you respond to that? The opportunity for democracy remains in Nicaragua, Cuba, and Venezuela. We must continue fighting. We have resisted a regime that has been linked to crimes against humanity, that has direct ties to Putin. Lavrov was in Venezuela just a week ago. We have resisted those that are connected to drug trafficking, terrorism. We all must be held accountable for our actions. This is a moment for the international community to do more on behalf of democracy, to do more for those in the resistance movement, not just in Venezuela, but also in Cuba, Nicaragua, and yes, still have an open task and a responsibility regarding democracy. Did you uh, misuse that that you had options of? Did you not take advantage of all of the things, the 56 countries plus the United States, the humanitarian aid, the embassies, did you misuse that? Nosotros utilizamos todas las herramientas a disposición para enfrentar eh, y poder derrotar al régimen de Maduro. We used all the tools at our disposal to face and defeat the regime. We need much more. We have seen it in Nicaragua, in Belarus, in Ukraine. The international community has to be tougher. The tools that we have to confront dictatorships, like the sanctions, have to be exercised with strength, have to hold this dictatorship accountable and innovate and go further. You have seen close allies, friends, colleagues detained, kidnapped, tortured and, and even killed. Your wife and your two little daughters, one-year-old and, and five-year-old, are still in Venezuela. Do you fear for them? Yes, I'm really worried, not just for them, but also the 300 political prisoners. But right now, I'm just thinking about Miranda and Merida, my two babies that are under threat in Caracas. I think about their safety. I hope to keep them protected while under the threat of the Maduro regime. As you speak of threats, what kind of threats have they received? Phone calls to Fabiana, where they told them in Spanish that they were going to be screwed. They were going to be harmed. Also, in that call that Fabiana received on Monday, they told them about how I was going to be deported from Colombia to Venezuela. Under this regime in, in Venezuela, more than 7 million people have been forced to leave the country in which they were born, and that's just in the last eight years. Other than Syrians, Venezuelans make up the biggest group of people forced to leave their countries on Earth. More than half a million Venezuelans have come here to the United States, many, no doubt, on their way through the Darien jungles and more. What's your message to the president of the United States, to the members of Congress that represent the American people? that we have to keep pressuring to get rid of the dictatorship. We have to stop the flow of migration. Definitely the only way we can accomplish that is through democracy. On Wednesday, I'll be in Washington, meeting with Senator Dick Durbin and also with members of Congress. We need to continue pressuring the dictatorship. Would you like to meet with President Biden? We are going to be with the executive. Have you asked to meet with President Biden? We have asked to meet with the executive and with the State Department, and we are sure, as we feel today, that the government of the United States has dealt with democracy really well, very different from what happened in Colombia. 
there is a huge contrast between the treatment of the United States and that of Colombia, evidently. Colombia has a new president. Uh, Colombia actually uh, is one of the countries that recognize your interim presidency. But now with this new president, is Colombia now different? Today, Colombia is now closer to Maduro than to democracy and the fight for democracy in Venezuela. Juan Guaido, thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate it.